Ari. Welcome to the second ever edition of my now award-winning regular feature, Artists Who Are Overrated Hacks. Last time we had Raphael the Turtle, and this time we have got Paul Anker. He is the cover artist to this comic, and if there is a single artist who is the harbinger of the death of Marvel Comics, it is Paul Anker. His art, his art is passable if you're in the bland Tumblr fan art, but why Paul Anker is an overrated hack is he is responsible for some of the worst redesigns in the history of comic books. And this team here, which are written okay and on the insides they're drawn fine, this team, they are close to unreadable because of the fucking repulsive ugly redesigns by Paul Anker. Also, the quality of printing here is awful. The ink rubbed off on me hands and I swear this is true, I put a comic down for three minutes and my dog Wendell, he honestly tried to do a shit on it. This is written by David Peter and he is an okay writer. I'm not crazy about him but he has written some solid comics and the artist here, after this he went out with the DC and started D in the flask and I think he got a lot better on the flask. But maybe, maybe here he is good and he's just stuck drawing these absolutely disgraceful costumes like Miss Magnets. She is great and Paul Anker's exciting design, like a lot of his designs, are fucking horrible colours. Who the fuck thinks that taking a bunch of great excellent main characters like Miss Magnets and Ed Gambit and The Flash and getting rid of their fantastic iconic designs in favour of this luminous lemon orange tumbler redesign is a good idea. And it might seem petty for me to largely reject this book because of these redesigns but I didn't fucking care. It's this vanity that they can recreate and redesign fucking icons that led Marvel to the fucking slaughterhouse. Uh, David Peter, he's probably the best writer they had working for them at that point. Uh, this artist, he'll come to his own in a year or two on the flask. Well, he could have been nurtured at Marvel, but instead, both these creators, they are slapped in the face with what is indisputably a fucking vile design conformity and oh god look at all the cat hair on that <laughs> and it's not just this book Paul Anker he was put on a pedestal by Marvel and he was chosen as a designer and he redesigned almost the entire line and did the same shit with like Galactical Guardians he had them all wearing matching ugly orange costumes my beautiful bald lady Moon Garden, she got stuck wearing an orange and green number that matched Willow and the rest of the team. And orange again, Paul Anker, he thinks that orange and yellow is like the best fucking colours possible to put superheroes in. Uh, other horrific Paul Anker redesigns include uh, the Alpha Strike redesigns from Captain Marbles, uh, the shit one, Smelly Bray Larson's. Uh, Paul Anker he is heavily linked to the storied history of Captain Marbles, the shit one, Smelly Bray Larson's. Uh, there was a bunch of excellent main characters he put in matching orange costumes too. Uh, he redesigned Wolfman, orange again. Orange is like the worst colour. It is an off-putting colour. It is loud and abrasive. It doesn't really gan well with any other colour. You can get away with like one or two heroes having an orange costume, but this idiot, Paul Anker, he redesigns everyone with these shit deviant art macromedia flash costumes, and they're all orange or bright yellow, and I hate it. Uh, Paul Anker, he is also the main culprit for the defeminization of female designs. Uh, as I said, he is heavily linked to Captain Marbles, the shit one, Smelly Bray Larson's. 
He transforms women into flat-chested boys wearing ugly colours. No skin is ever shown because women should apparently be deeply ashamed of their skin. And if you think I'm being a leery prick, why would you take a character like Fetish Fuel, whose sole existence is to be Fetish Fuel, and cover her up head to toe and make her figure that of a male mannequin? Uh, he was responsible for a lot of those terrible costumes that were desperate to be cosplayed as. Uh, also, he did that sorry excuse for a uh, Hercules man redesign with the fucking man bun. Uh, Paul Anker, he is a visual representation of the death of Marvel and the comic book industry. And the story of this comic, the story is hardly worth talking about because there isn't much of any. Uh, extra factors, now they are a corporate team and David Peter presents this idea like he is the first person to ever think of a superhero team working for a corporation. I mean to say the idea is old would be an understatement. What gets across how ancient the idea is, let me just say that even fucking Kurt Busey did this idea in Thunderballs and all Kurt Busey ever does is rehash and borrow and hijack stories from the 60s. And then we have got The Flash. He's there in his original costume. And look at that. That is a great costume. It is blue and silver and that matches the character and his powers. It's perfect. He stands out. And like, if you throw him into an enormous crowd scene, you can straight away pick him out because of his costume. Well, if you like that, keep dreaming because he gets fucking slapped in a matching orange wrapper. And they all have these, these orange lenses in front of their eyes and it's fucking ugly. Paul Anker did this with Hercules, man, and the Galactical Guardians too. It's like... This really is at the level of that Captain Atomant redesign. Uh, the Alec Rose one. Actually, no, this is worse. This is... I truly believe this is worse. With that Captain Atomant design, at the very least, you could say that A, it was based on his original look, and B, it was unique to him. I'm struggling to think of other words to get across how unattractive and unpleasant and horrible and ugly and sickening and revolting and vile these matching costumes are. Oh, I have got a perfect example of how these costumes are just nauseating, but also fail on any level. We have this cover here by Paul Anker and we have this character here. He is not in the comic. I've not read any issues beyond this one and based on how disagreeable the designs for this team are I probably never will read more. We have got this character here and he's not in the issue but he's apparently a member of the team and I have no fucking idea who this is. The whole point of fucking superhero costumes and uniforms is that they are identifiable. This, it could be Pillock, it could be Cannonballs, it could be a woman, it could be Captain Marbles, the shit one, Smelly Bray Larson's. You cannot tell with Paul Anker. And I'd like to apologise to any deviant art or Tumblr artists because there are ones out there who are significantly better than this twat who thinks repellent, stomach churning orange designs are better than ones that have stood the test of time for 50 years. This comic is pretty crap, but nowhere near as crap as these designs. Even if they had better costumes, it would still best be evaluated with a shrug and seven thumbs up.